The Mr. Excel Podcast is sponsored by Easy Excel. Learn Excel from Mr. Excel Podcast, episode 1946. Where did you find all? Hey, welcome back to the Mr. Excel Netcast. I'm Bill Jalen. What a horrible, horrible situation we have today. So many times in Excel, uh, we find data that is poorly shaped, it's misshaped, and we just have a horrible set of steps to go through. Uh, this question sent in from California. They have data, uh, let's see, it's uh, 15,000 rows, 15 columns, so almost, well, 225,000 words, uh, and need to find every instance of anything related to candy. All right, so using Control F, Finder in place, and then Find All. All right, which is very fast. It's very fast to go through and find out of those 225,000 words. Uh, every cell that contains candy and of course uh, this is random data here I'm sure in real life uh, it makes more sense but then we need to get a list of all of those words and where they occur in Word and what's happening right now uh, as we come to Word uh, the insert tab open the screenshot drop down go down to screen clipping and you'll see that I've actually added that up on the quick access toolbar so it saves a couple of clicks uh, Word gets hidden, we see the Excel screen behind, grays out, and then we have to kind of paint what we want to grab. And hey, there we go, the data's in Word. But it's not really data in Word, it's a picture in Word. Whoever asked us to do this uh, is going to be really upset when we get pictures of the data. It's like we're going to have to retype all of that data in Word. It's just going to be a horrible process, especially if we have hundreds of words that we have to search for. And so the first thing I thought is, wow, you know, filters, filters would make this job a lot easier, but the data is really, really poorly, uh, poorly shaped right now with the 15 different columns. If this was all in one column, uh, life would be easier. And so I guess I could, I could cut and paste 14 times to get it all in one column. But, you know, I'm worried that we need to know where the data exists. So I don't want to touch that original data. I'm going to press uh, Alt F11, insert a module, and created this little macro here called unwind them, unwind them. And it says, hey, we have two sheets. The sheet where the original data is is just called sheet one, and then a blank sheet called sheet two. Uh, the macro clears out sheet two, put some headings up there. I'm going to track the address where the word was found, the word, and then also, this wasn't in the question, but I, I had, when, as I'm picturing this data, I have to imagine there's some identifying information over in column A and up in row one. So my macro is going to grab those values, the location and uh, from column A and the product. Then have a little counter variable here. It starts at two because that's the first place I want to write data to. For each cell in B2 to P3001, 30,001, that's where our data is. If the value is non-blank, then go to the next row on worksheet two, sheet two, and write out four things. Where did this cell come from? What's the address? What's the value currently in the cell? Uh, and then what is in that row column A and what's in row one, that column from that cell. And then finally increment the counter. So that way the next time uh, it will write to the next place. Now, hey, if you've never used macros before, just a couple of quick little uh, things, make sure uh, your file, I'm sure, is stored as XLSX, right up here in the title bar. XLSX is the default file type, and it is the only file type in the entire universe that does not allow macros. You have to do file save as and change that to XLSM or XLSB. Also, if you've never done macros, do Alt-T for Tom, M for macro, S to get to the Trust Center and macro settings. Right now, you're currently at the top one move down to the second one so that macro is allowed to run and finally you know make sure that sheet two has nothing on it if you have something on sheet two rename it and put another sheet two there called sheet two all right so alt f8 and we'll find that macro called unwind them and click run now with 225,000 cells that it has to go to this is going to take a couple of minutes uh, so i'm going to pause and we'll come back all right, there you go. That did take like three or four minutes, and it's kind of disconcerting. It says that Excel is not responding. You just just wait until Excel comes back. And what we have now on sheet two is we've reshaped this data into a single, essentially a single column of 225,000 words. See, now we can use Excel's built-in tools, for example, filter. Uh, so I'll turn on the filter here. We'll come to column B, 
and I will use the search box and search for candy and then choose OK. Now the advantage here uh, is that I have a beautiful little data set. I can select just those cells. When I copy those cells, it will just copy those values, not all the hidden rows. So Control C. Now bounce over to Word and Control V, and I'm actually pasting a real live table with real words, not pictures of words of what's going on. All right, now uh, one downside here is if you're in Excel 2007, uh, they did not have the search routine in the filter. Uh, if you're in Excel 2007 or earlier, uh, we're going to have to use a formula out here. And so uh, out in column H, I'm going to put the word candy that I'm searching for. And here we'll say equals search. Why search instead of find? Because it is case insensitive. So we're looking for H1, F4, to put the dollar signs in within cell B2. Now, most of the time, you're going to get a value error, so let's just test for that. We'll say equal is error. And double click to copy that down. So anytime we get a true, it means that the item is not found. We're actually looking for the false. It's kind of backwards there. I suppose I could have used the not function around that to reverse the true and false, but I'm fine searching for the false. And now we turn our filters on again, use the find drop down and say that we only want the false values. Alright, so there's all the cells in the original data set that contain the word candy. The one benefit about this it is relatively easy to come out here and for example type the word chocolate. And then inside the filter to say reapply, which will look through column A again and find the falses. There we go. So all the cells that contain chocolate. Still, this could be a huge task if you had hundreds or thousands of these to do. But uh, that one simple macro shows how you know we can take a really hideous process and dramatically uh, make it faster. All right, well, hey, I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another netcast, Mr. Excel.